Okay, welcome back to the employee versus independent contractor series I've developed here for the website. And in this tutorial, what I will be discussing is the dangers of not doing things properly. So the dangers, really what I'm talking about here is uh, hiring a employee and paying them as contractors. Now, if you haven't gone over the two tutorials on uh, the introductory issues and uh, the differences between employees and contractors, I would recommend going through those videos first and they should be located just above this one on my website. So that will give you a good uh, overview of the issues and help you to understand the concepts that I will be discussing in this video. All right, so let's get started here. Now, what can happen if an employee is determined, uh, sorry, if a contractor is really determined to be an employee? So you've been, you've been paying your employees as contractors all this time. Uh, you've basically taken the stance that they weren't employees and that they were independent contractors. The CRA comes in and does a audit of your payroll and says, you know what, these people aren't really contractors, they're employees. So what will happen? Okay, well first, you will owe the CPP and EI on the years being audited. So if you remember, the business is responsible for matching the company's CPP and remitting 1.4 times the EI on any employees. So if your, if your contractors are determined to be employees, the CRA is going to assess you for these amounts. Now what they could also do is assess you for the employees CPP and EI that should have been remitted. So for example, if I'm working for you, you should have remitted CPP and EI on my salary. And what the, what the CRA can do is say, okay, not only do you owe us the CPP and the EI on the business's portion, but what we're gonna do is we're going to assess you for Ian's CPP and EI, which you should have collected from him and remitted on his behalf in the first place. And then you can try to get the CPP and EI back from Ian in that, in that case. So obviously you do not want to be in that situation where you have to go to your employees and say that they owe you money because they're going to be, uh, they should have remitted CPP and EI on their behalf. Okay, so that is the biggest chunk. Now, of course, what's going to happen is there's going to be interest on those amounts. So at the very least, they're going to charge you the prescribed rate of interest which, you know, depending on the year and when you get audited and so forth, could be anywhere from, you know, 4 to 7%. Once again, it's hard to say based on uh, the years under audit. What the CRA will also do is they're going to issue a T4 to all the employees and reassess them as employees. So this always causes a disaster whereby, you know, the employees are assessed as, uh, your contractors are assessed as employees, so then they get these assessments for these huge taxes because they add the T4 on top of what they should have been uh, determining or paying tax on their contract income. So that's a whole issue unto itself. Let me just tell you this. If you are in this situation, it is a complete disaster. So really your only alternative, your only bet is to set things up properly Make sure that if you do have contractors, they're set up properly as contractors. And if somebody is an employee, you set them up as an employee. Under no circumstance do you ever want to go through this. It is a complete disaster. Okay, so let's go on to something else that can happen. The Workers' Compensation Board. You would also be responsible to your provincial WSIB. If they're determined to be contractors instead of employees, or excuse me, employees instead of contractors, well, employees are subject to uh, workers insurance the WSIB premiums and so are contractors contractors you know would be subject to premiums as well so this is an area where there really is no right or wrong answer you could be assessed you know either way either as paying contractors who might not have clearance certificates from the WSIB or of course you know not remitting WSIB for people who should have been employees once again, without going into the nitty-gritty here, it is a complete disaster. You do not want this to happen. Now, also remember that the CRA and the WSIB exchange information. So if the CRA all of a sudden issues T4s to the people that they determine should have been employees, well, they will pass that information on to the WSIB. And, of course, the WSIB will also assess for the premiums on those employees. So as you can see, 
it can get pretty, pretty serious. And there has been a lot of situations, lots of cases where businesses have just gone bankrupt because of this, uh, because of this fiasco. All right, so I know what you're probably thinking. What are the chances of getting caught? Well, unfortunately, the chances are quite high. So I'll go through some of the situations here which, uh, where you could get caught. The first, relatively straightforward, is the CRA does a payroll audit. So CRA has departments where really all they do is they actually, they're actually out looking for this type of stuff. So you know, don't think that it's something that you can fly under the radar map for for a long time. CRA does have tests and they do have auditors who just do payroll audits and they easily catch this type of thing. Again, the WSIB does a review or an audit. Same as the CRA, WSIB knows about these types of arrangements and they go out specifically looking for it. So if uh, you get a call from a WSIB auditor, even if you're not registered for WSIB, you could be in some trouble. Okay, well, maybe you can say, well, my business is so small that you know, I don't have, uh, you know, I'm off the radar maps for CRA and WSIB, so I'm pretty much safe. Okay, well, if you, that being the case, there are still some ways that you can get caught. First is that you record subcontract expense or commissions on your tax returns or financial statements. So when you file your taxes at the end of the year, you know, anybody you're paying as a contractor should be set up as a subcontract expense on your financial statement. And of course, that can get caught by the CRA when they review or if they review your tax returns. Second, this is very, very common and where a lot of small businesses get caught. What happens is you have a contractor working for you, everything is great for a couple years, and then of course your business runs into some problems and you have to lay off the subcontractor. Well, you can't really lay off a subcontractor. Contractors, by definition, run their own business, so you're not laying them off, you're just no longer using their services. Now, unless you have an agreement with this contractor, what a lot of them do is they don't know the difference between employees and subcontractors. They just like getting their big fat paycheck and not paying tax on it. So what they do is they go to the employment insurance office and they apply for EI. Of course, the employment insurance office says, well, you can't collect employment insurance because you're a subcontractor. You're a contractor. Your employer hasn't been remitting any EI for you, so you're not entitled to the benefits. And then, of course, the employee says, your person says, well, no, wait, I've been working for, you know, ABC company for two years. Uh, I'm really an employee. I don't know what they've been doing on their payroll and whatever. I'm entitled to employment insurance. Perfect. They give them the employment insurance and then they send the CRA auditor over and you're, you know, knee deep in that disaster we talked about earlier. So be very, very careful. Another way people get caught is that someone gets injured at work, and this is where you run into problems with the WSIB. So someone could get injured on the job, uh, you know, however minor the injury or major the injury, they go to the hospital, and of course the hospital is obligated to report any sort of work-related injuries to the WSIB. So of course they report that to the Workers' Compensation Board, the Workers' Compensation Board checks the file and sees, well, there hasn't been any, you know, insurance premiums remitted for this person who's really an employee or working for this person, well, that's sent out to WSIB auditor and investigate. And of course, there you go again. You're in the same position as before where you're going to have to uh, deal with the consequences of the uh, of employees being classified from contractor to employee and all those assessments. So there you go. There you have it. It is a little bit scary. I'm not really here to try to scare you. I'm just here to tell you what can happen and the risks. So once again, very important. If you want to sleep at night, it is going to cost you more, yes. But in the long run, believe me, it is the best thing. If you have employees, treat them as employees, pay them as employees, and you won't run into any of these problems. So that's it for this short video. And in the next uh, video tutorial, we'll look at some other issues related to the employee versus contractor issues. And in particular, we're going to look at setting things up properly if you really do have contractors. So that's next.